Good afternoon. more minutes it feels like spring doesn't it and it's supposed to be spring the break week it's horrible it is absolutely horrible I have an email from Alex that says he's running a little late. He'll be here shortly. Caring is graduating. Satya became world famous. All right, since Alex is going to be running late, uh, let's start uh, the recording uh, so that those of you who are late may be able to catch up with this. Let me share my screen. Share application screen allows us. So we are going to be tackling another class of uh, problems where we can use integer programming, integer linear programming, uh, which also means that you can use binary variables. And uh, those are the ones that uh, we started with the lecture on flexural uh, stiffness design, where uh, we actually showed that uh, uh, the D matrix terms, D11, D12, D22, and D66 are going to be linear in terms of the bending stiffness lamination parameters. Uh, those are W1 star and W3 star. Uh, there are also others, but uh, by using the uh, balanced condition with the plus minus orientations, uh, we typically get rid of the uh, three star and the uh, four, uh, uh, two star and uh, four star. So we end up only uh, W1 and W3, just like the in-plane lamination parameters V1 star and V3 star, and they also fall into this uh, lamination parameter diagram, uh, which means if you want, you can actually use a lamination parameter diagram for flexural stiffness properties. But we're not going to uh, deal with uh, such trivial uh, matters anymore uh, because we have computer-based tools that we can actually attack those uh, linear problems directly to solve numerically to get to the final optimum design, uh, typically in just one iteration. Although you've seen in the case of the, the previous uh, tutorial, uh, we may find out that uh, if you were to linearize the constraints, we may have to redo the iteration again and again. That's a tricky tr tr process. So we took the nonlinear problem and made a sequence of linearization. What we're doing today is we are actually taking the linear problem as is. There is no sequential linearization. We're going to pose these problems as direct linear programming problems so that we can solve the uh, sexual stiffness parameters 
uh, as linear uh, problem, problem, programming problems. Now, if you were to add string constraints to this uh, texture problems, then uh, those string constraints are going to come as nonlinear. And you may have to actually, you may want to linearize those along with already linear uh, flexure parameters so that you can des uh, design things uh, together with buckling and strength constraints. Now, that uh, is pretty much uh, the whole gamut of uh, uh, design possibilities that you have, uh, stiffness optimization, strength optimization together, and in-plane and out-of-plane uh, together. That's about it. We don't really have uh, much else uh, left. Uh, after that, uh, there are methodologies that actually use different optimization techniques to do the same problems differently. But uh, the methodologies that we covered so far should be capable of solving any problems, including the sequential linear programming and sequential integer linear programming. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're not going to look at uh, uh, other methods uh, before the end of the semester. I'm going to do the uh, the uh, genetic algorithms, which is a, a, a an algorithm. Those are the, it's a class of algorithms that handle discrete design variable optimization. So in that case, we don't have to just limit ourselves to uh, zeros, forty five, 90s. We can actually include other alphabets as we like, uh, as long as uh, uh, we can uh, discretize something that we want. Uh, you can use discrete angles of any uh, of your choosing to, to do the optimization. But that's uh, that's later. So with this uh, brief uh, introduction, uh, let me go and uh, actually uh, uh, refresh the effectual parameters with uh, the charts that we have uh, already used. We said flexual optimization uh these are the charts these are uh, on the blackboard and uh, we basically skipping the equations we said we could uh, attack problems like the, the buckling bending and vibration problems which are all expressed in terms of the d11 d16 d26 and d66 uh, terms uh and then we write the d11 through d66 in terms of V0 Ds, V1 Ds, and V2 D, V3 D, and V4 D. Uh, and if we do that uh, and normalize the, the V1 Ds and V3 Ds for balanced limits, you get nice expression for W1 star, which will be the summation of uh, SK cosine 2K, where SK is a, a, a complicated uh, expression, but not a horribly difficult one. It just has z cube minus zk minus uh, one cube type of terms where zk is the coordinates to the interface of different layers uh, if you aggregate some orientations uh, uh, angles together uh, then expressing this in terms of thicknesses is a little difficult you can actually perhaps get uh, uh, zk minus zk minus one to be uh, the thickness, uh, but then you end up with uh, terms like uh, uh, zk square that would multiply the, the thickness term, which is still uh, not not very easy. But uh, normalized form of W1 and W3s are fairly simple. And as I said before, if for one orientation angle, they are the boundary of the Mickey's diagram. For more than one orientation angles, the entire Mickey's diagram is, is at play. This is supposed to be W1 star and W3 star. And then we can use this. But again, as I said in the, in the introduction, we're not going to deal with uh, those anymore. So flexural design uh, is now linear. Uh, the D11, D12, D22, and D166 uh, terms are linear in terms of W1 star and W3 star. These are the, all the terms that have applied the, the orientations as well as applied thicknesses in there. Capital U's are the invariant uh, material properties. And H cube is there, so the thickness is coming as cubed. 
Uh, but if we normalize the 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 d uh, with the constant stiffness, then uh, uh, these are not going to be important. Uh, so for constant thickness design problems, where you say I'm just going to have 16 plies or 24 plies, this is a known number, and that's why uh, thickness minimization. We're not going to talk about that right away. We are going to first deal with problems where the thickness is going to be fixed. Uh, and then we're going to find the lamination parameters, uh, bending lamination parameters, W13 star and W3 star to optimize uh, some performance. Uh, if we express them in terms of what we call ply identity or uh, stack identity variables, these are binary variables, zeros or ones, and uh, they show whether given a uh, whether a given ply is a zero or a forty-five or a minus forty-five or a minus forty uh, uh, minus forty-five or a ninety-degree ply. So what it is is there are basically four binary variables for each ply in your laminate. So assuming that constant thickness laminate, we know the total number of layers, but we don't know how these layers uh, distribute between zeros and 45s and 90s. They can be mixed in different places. And that makes a big difference for the D matrix, okay? Unlike the A matrix, we cannot just group the zeros and 45s and 90s together. Any discrepancy in the stacking sequence by simply switching two plies uh, uh, with, with one another, your D matrix is going to be changing. So what we do in this case, we define four binary variables for each ply that can only take zero or one value. And furthermore, we impose the condition that uh, some of the binary variables for that ply can be at most one, they must be less than equal to one, meaning that only one of the orientation variables can take a value of one, which will mean that that ply is going to be that orientation. All the others have to be zero, uh, zero values, meaning that those ply orientations are not going to appear there. Uh, so in the case of uh, zeros, I used um, in my lecture notes uh, all but in the tutorials, I'm switching them to Z. Z sub K, N sub K, F sub K, F plus sub K, F minus sub K. So pl for ply one, we have Z one, N one, F plus one, F uh, uh, minus one. And some of those must be less than equal to one. So if one of them is one, the others must be zero, meaning that you identify that given ply either as a zero or a 90, or a plus 45, or a minus 45. If you're going to be using uh, balanced laminates, we know that these are going to be equal to one another uh, from the balanced condition. So we take stack of two layers and make them uh, basically variables, uh, zero, one variables. Now I'm going to uh, make this to be uh, simple, and we're going to say uh, symmetric balanced laminates through the thickness, there are a total of n layers. Only half the layers being designed, k okay, from one to n over two, half of them. Uh, and this is going to be the v zero. This is going to be the v one and v three. The w's have z minus z k minus one cube terms, but uh, knowing that the ply has all have the same thickness, these actually can be simplified. Uh, to give you this, these kinds of terms, where k again is from 1 to n over 2, k cube minus k minus uh, 1 cube, multiplying this uh, uh, summation terms that only one of them can be 1 at a given ply. So it's v1 and v3. So this is the scheme that's going to be used uh, for optimization. Now, I'd like to remind you that that by forcing the condition that uh, 
zk plus nk plus f plus k or f minus k less than or equal to 1 gives you a ply with a given orientation angle. What if I make that to be less than or equal to 0? instead of making less than or equal to one. What would that mean? Anybody? Let me repeat the question. For a given ply, I'm identifying the orientation of that ply with binary variables zk, nk, fk, let's cut the plus minus fk. If I make this less than or equal to 1, I'm enforcing that layer to have either a 0 degree ply, 9 degree ply, or a 45 degree ply. It cannot be anything else. What if I change this condition to be less than or equal to 0? I'm looking at my text messages to see the beautiful answer that will be coming from any one of you at any given moment. I'm going to count up to three, and I'm going to have an answer text. And then I reached three. One. Two. Three. You don't have to write pages of answers. Should I make a sketch? Let's make a sketch. It's worthwhile to make a sketch for this. Uh, there was an answer, but uh, it is too late. I'm already on my pen colors blue. Let me end the show. And go to answers. <laughs> Sketch would help. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right. Let's go to the sketch then. Uh, pen color uh, blue. All right. So, in this case, uh, since I'm doing this uh, 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 only half of the layer, uh, I'm going to do only the layers below. And I'm going to be making this layer one, layer two layer three, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Each layer has a binary variable called uh, Z. Uh, and for layer one, this is Z1. Uh, for nine degree ply, binary variable N1. And if it was uh, 45, it's F1. And second layer has a binary variable Z2, uh, nine degree variable, and two and F2. And this goes through the thickness for each layer. Now, for this, I am saying that Z1 plus N1 plus F1 must be less than equal to one. These are binary variables. They are either 0 or 1. What does this condition do? This condition ensures that this ply is either a 0 or a 90 or a 45. It cannot be z equals 1, n equals 1, meaning that it's at the same time a 0 degree ply and a 90 degree ply. No, this condition, if one of these is one, all the others must be zero to satisfy this condition. This condition ensures that plies are identified with, bi with a binary variable, which is either Z or N or F. All right. Now, what if I relax this and say, this must be less than equal to zero. What's the 
the worst case scenario that you can get for z n and f can you get z equals two no it automatically violates the condition can you get it all right shall i go and look at the answer or let's keep this for some reason i cannot uh, yes you get applied without an angle what does that mean it doesn't exist there wouldn't be any ply orientation that is correct however you will see later on we will need another condition to be able to use this notion to start changing the thickness of the laminate because if a ply disappears that means uh, i'm actually changing the thickness i'm starting to make a design that uh, will have thickness variation in it if five of the plies orientations disappear out of 100 plies the laminate will be lighter but we will need one more condition to satisfy otherwise we're going to have voids in the laminate we'll have voids that are equal to the thickness of a ply if a certain ply disappears and for that we're gonna use another condition to 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 satisfy our needs so that 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 is uh, the correct answer if uh, this condition holds uh that means z can be zero n can be zero f can be zero meaning that there is no orientation associated with, with this ply but we'll need to then push this out so that uh, there won't be any voids in the laminate but if this is uh, just used as one then uh, then uh, it will ensure that we have uh, at least uh, uh, if it's one that means at least one of those orientations occupy this this ply so these are the equations for uh, W0D, but we also know that uh, W star uh, is normalized by taking these out. So we're going to have a formulation that will uh, typically have this. Well, maybe we'll cover this uh, notion of thickness minimization in this. So the, one of the problems that you'll be able to solve is a simple uh, a uh, buckling problem of a rectangular uh, laminate under uh, uh, uniaxial and transverse uh, loads nx uh, and ny zero and uh, you can see that the critical buckle load lambda critical is a function of pi square d these these basically these are uh, now linear in terms of lamination parameters uh, m and n are the uh, buckling mode shapes and typically these are also de design dependent uh, so they are part of something to be determined what what the m and n are going to be the loads are going to be given and x and, and y will be given we'll say that uh, the buckling load must be at least uh, this much so we're going to try to minimize the thickness of a laminate uh, to maintain a desired load carrying capability. The converse of this problem is to, to actually uh, uh, same, uh, keep the same thickness, given thickness, and try to maximize the buckling load uh, of, the, of the laminate or vibration frequency. We're gonna uh, demonstrate the vibration frequency. So lambda star, which is only one load, critical buckling load, is minimum of lambda critical over all the possible M's and N's. These are half mo uh, 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 mode shapes. M and N are the, uh, the buckling uh, uh, shapes associated with uh, sine waves along the length and transverse to the length direction. So if you have a, 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 a laminate, let me see if I have my pen here. 
and color blue. So I have a, a square plate or rectangular plate and uh, I'm applying uh, uniform NX distributed uh, like this. This is specified. And this is an X there as well. Uniform. Uh, it has the plate has an aspect ratio of aspect ratio of A over B. As this aspect ratio changes, if I look at the side view of this panel, if M is equal to one, it's gonna buckle into a single half wave along the length. If uh, M is equal to two, If I look at the side, uh, side view, I'm gonna see two half waves along the, the length. And transverse uh, to the length, if I look at the top view of this uh, laminate from the top, and that will give you N, which uh, can be uh, So this is A, this is B, and this is N equals one. And depending on the aspect ratio, as well as the values of D11 through D66, it is not known uh, beforehand what M and N values will give us the lowest eigenvalue for this problem, lowest buckling load, lowest load, which is the critical load in terms of M and N. So what we do for that is we fix maximum number of M, maximum number of N, and evaluate lambda critical for each values of M and N in a table, say M from one to five, N from one to five, look at them and take the minimum out of those and say that the lambda star is uh, the one that is smaller than the, every one of those. And we make this lambda star to be variable, to be determined. We don't know what lambda star is. We don't know what the stacking sequence is, but uh, we're gonna minimize the weight, which is uh, sum of the O i n i f i, i from one to n over four, or k, k from one to n over four. The only the, the thing is we also want uh, this lambda uh, not to influence this equation in an adverse way. So we subtract from uh, this weight a small percentage, say 0 0.001 uh, of lambda star, which we are trying to determine to minimize uh, this. So that uh, they're also uh, enforcing the, the condition that that lambda star is also simultaneously minimized, even though we're looking for uh, its smallest value out of the lambda critical ones. So this is gonna be the, the design problem that we're gonna tackle. And uh, uh, we are going to require that uh, these, not zero, but to be less than equal to, uh, not one, but less than equal to zero. That way, uh, we can uh, not as an equality, but less than equal to uh, zero so that uh, we can have, uh, we have to let the, we, we'll, we'll do it less than equal to, to one uh, so that you can still get zero. We're not going to uh, enforce them to be equal to one. I think I may have said something uh, correct, uh, uh, incorrectly earlier. Yeah, uh, this was to maintain uh, uh, the the condition that uh, 
Yes, I I completely uh, messed up the discussion. But let me correct this with uh, maybe red pen, which I cannot get my red pen. I don't know why. That's red. So if I make them uh, equals one, then uh, I'm enforcing that uh, one of these is one. Uh, and if uh, one of them is one, the others are forced to zero. So this is the condition where apply occupies by an orientation occupies a given uh, location. And if I make that to be less than equal to one, uh, by making less than I, I'm able to uh, accept the condition that all of them can be uh, zero, in which case it still satisfies. This is an equality condition that has to be satisfied. And I may have actually uh, sold the tutorial incorrectly with this. I, I don't know where my mind was, but I just uh, occurred to me that I was just making a mistake that uh, this, this really is one, as the, the notes show. Uh, the only other condition that uh, that we're going to use, if this is less than uh, equal to, instead of equal to, uh, that the eyes, some of the the eyes, must be less than equal to some of the i minus ones. Meaning that uh, only the plies on the outside uh, are can be completely void. The plies that are uh, closer to mid plane are going to have to uh, be larger than all zero, equal or uh, larger. So in this case, uh, I am going from. Uh, uh, one to no, this for the first day. This will be two plus and two plus f two must be equal to uh, z one plus z n one plus f one. So some of these uh, that are on the uh, next level cause of surface must be less than the the one uh, on the inside. Okay, so you're gonna see these uh, in the in the tutorials. So I apologize for this uh, mix-up. That this is a true condition that less than or equal to one. And here, what I meant was, uh, if you force as equality, then uh, uh, you won't have a void. You will have uh, either a zero or ninety or forty-five. And if you're less than or equal to one, then uh, you're allowing uh, avoid a given ply. In which case, you have to make sure that uh, uh, this is uh, this is less than this one, or this is less than this one. But always the the, the next bigger one should be less than the the, the previous one. All right. So that's it. This is the integer uh, and binary. In this particular case, the integers are binaries. Incidentally, uh, uh, as soon as I start uh, programming these things, uh, I looked at uh, Mathematica. It has a, a, a integer description, real description. You know, real numbers are represented. Uh, uh, integer numbers are represented by real. Integers are by integer. I thought uh, there has to be binary, uh, but there is no binary. So I don't know why um, Mathematica doesn't have binary. They have a, a zero one kind of thing with Boolean, uh, but that's true or false. It's not a number representation. So somehow uh, Mathematica completely lacks the, the binary definition. So to define a binary number in an integer set, you have to make sure that uh, you put a lower bound of zero, upper bound of one for an integer so that it becomes a binary. Uh, 
<laughs> doesn't recognize binary as a as a number, which I think uh, is an oversight. So that's uh, that's the lecture part. Any questions so far? Which means we can go to the tutorial. Are my tutorials, composites, spring tutorials, eleven. All right, this tutorial is not on the web yet because I was actually working on this this week. So let me open my CLT, run my CLT code, check if CLT is there, yes. So, the flexural stiffness uh, requires definition of D11 through D66. These are from lecture notes, which is the H cube over 12. H is the total uh, laminate thickness. Uh, U1, which is uh, capital U1, U2, U3. Uh, but I represent uh, my internal variables as always uh, lowercase. And then the W1 star variable is represented by W1 star and W3 star represented by W3 star. So these are the definitions of my D11, D22, D12, and D66. And uh, then uh, limiting ourselves to 16 ply layups, I could have really increased this to some other number, but uh, I just Pick the 16, that's, that's a good number, it's not too many things that I have, I have to worry about. Uh, and I'm going to use ZK, not OK, and NK, and NK, and FK as FK for uh, 0, 45, 5, 9 degree stacks. In which case, uh, the equations for V0, A, V1, A, V3, A are in this form, where these are uh, ply uh, or stack identity variables, and the Ws are given in this form, where normalized W is 12 V1, D over H cube. So my total thickness H is 16 times ply thickness uh, at 16 ply layup. And then the W1 star is 12 over H cube, 12 over H cube from one here. And then the V1 D is 16 times, that's this one, thickness cube, ply thickness cube divided by three, summation K from one to three, now uh, one to four, one to the third power minus minus one, one, one minus one, Z one minus N one, simply following this notation. The only thing is uh, for 45 degrees, uh, it uh, becomes uh, uh, the F zero becomes zero. Okay, so That's why uh, cosine to uh, uh, W1s will have only Z1 and N1, no F. And then uh, this is Z2, N2, Z3, N3. Uh, if you go to the V3 star, uh, which are actually in terms of the uh, signs, then you have... Uh, you have the F coming as 
uh, minus. So that's why F1 is here. So V3 star basically following this expression again. These are from the uh, charts. If I execute this, you can see that uh, uh, W1 star is basically only in terms of the binary variables, nothing else. Linear in binary variables N1, Z1, N2, Z2, N3, Z3, N4, Z4, and W3 star is in terms of N1, Z1, F1, etc., etc. So these are Ws. Uh, if I go back to the Ds now, let me remove the column so that you can see the output of all four lines. D11 is this one. It has uh, applied thickness to the cube, uh, multiplied by U's and linear. So it's nonlinear in terms of thickness. If the applied thickness uh, change, uh, if the, the, the if the applied thickness change, it's nonlinear. If the applied thickness is constant, it's a number uh, because we fixed the total thickness. Um, then the rest is linear, D11 through D66 in terms of the binary variables. The problem that uh, the first problem that we are solving is uh, again this equation shown in the notes. This is the fundamental frequency of a rectangular uh, panel uh, with uh, D terms. D stars are the normalized values of these, D11 through D66. And uh, their m, of, uh, m to the 4, a will be square, m square, n square, and n a will be to the 4th power. If we know the mode shape, vibration mode shape, m and n, if we play, you know, the aspect ratio, uh, everything is linear in terms of the uh, binary variables. If I don't know the m and n, then I do the same scheme that I use uh, m from 1 to 5, n from 1 to 5, and evaluate every one of them, and take the smallest one as my objective function all the time. So it's like uh, uh, evaluating it and, uh, and, and uh, finding the value of uh, m and m for a given uh, uh, property, and then uh, trying it. So I'm going to use a fixed uh, value of uh, low, uh, m and n equals 1. Uh, and material properties are defined here. Applied thickness is defined here. U vector is defined here. And I take that U vector and put it back to U1 through U5 because I have the U1 through U5 uh, in the expressions that I used here. Therefore, they do stay here. The Ds have uh, U1 through U5, U2 through U5 in them but, uh, still. So evaluating these, I get these uh, numbers. They are all numbers. My objective function is to minimize or maximize this quantity, maximize this one. And I have this star, but the normalization of all the Ds are the same. So it's a constant. And the value of the objective function, uh, optimum value doesn't change if I remove the constant in front of it. So my, I do my objective function to be simply D11 plus uh, D12 plus uh, 2D66 times A will be uh, square with M and N equals 1 and A will be equals 4 over 3. That's the aspect ratio of the, of the plate that I'm uh, uh, working with and D22. So this is my objective function. And it's completely near, linear in binary variables F uh, through uh, Z4. My constraints, oh yeah, I did it correctly. I uh, forced it to be equal equals one, uh, equals equals one, equals equals one, equals equals one. So ply one has to be either zero stack 
or 45 stack or 90. Ply 2 is be a 0 stack 45 or a 90. And ply 3 is a 0 45 or a 90. Ply 4 is 0 45 or a 90. So I put it to, into fine minimum of minus objective function. I'm trying to maximize the uh, frequency. Uh, 1, 1. I put those constraints in here. Uh, Z1 through N4 are my integer variables. And they're all integers. And they're all greater than 0. OK? Otherwise, I would have uh, uh, negative ply thicknesses. And to make them binary, to be, force them to be binary, uh, they all have to be also less than 1. This way, uh, uh, I'm forcing the, the variables to be integers, but binary. If they had uh, something here that, that I could write binary, I didn't have to actually uh, put constraints on the uh, any of these constraints. Because binary would have meant it's either 0 or 1. And I registered this complaint with Wolfram. <laughs> I don't know if they're going uh, to integrate uh, in bring in the binaries into their uh, program or not, but it uh, would have been a whole lot easier if uh, I could just say these are binary variables. Um, so this is, uh, and the variables are z1 through n4. Running it. Uh, something is not defined. It probably means that I forgot to execute something. And I believe I forgot to execute this one. Let's run it again. There it is. That's the solution. That says uh, Z1 is 0, Z2 is 0, Z3 is 0. So the first ply is not a 0 degree ply. Uh, 0 degree ply doesn't exist in any of the four locations. And 90 degree ply doesn't appear in any of the four locations through the thickness. But uh, 45 appears as one. So the lemma is entirely plus minus 45. Now, what if uh, I make them to be Just for curiosity, I get the same answer. So, in fact, uh, this means that to maximize the uh, fundamental frequency or maximize buckling load, you really cannot afford to make it thinner. You, you want to go to as thick of a laminate as possible. So this uh, was a meaningless exercise to to actually try uh, less than equal to one. None of them would have been going to less than equal to one. All right. So this is uh, the problem solved. The only addition that I can do to this problem now is if I want to put another constraint and say in plane stiffness properties, this is uh, basically all plus minus 45 degree ply laminate. Uh, let's say I want to A11 to be some large value so that it uh, has a large axial stiffness. Then I would put in another constraint in here that will uh, require these uh, V zero A's. Uh, so maybe I will uh, make a homework problem for you guys uh, after the spring break. You have a spring break one day uh, wellness day on uh, Tuesday, by the way. If you don't uh, know it, next week uh, on Tuesday is, is no pass. So that Problem. 
synchronization with button. And this actually implement. Let me quit the kernel because I really don't want the previous one to be any of the definitions to interfere with this one. All right, that would mean that I have to also run my all my CLT codes. All right. So this is going to again formulate last uh, follow the last chart uh, on the lecture notes that uh, we are trying to minimize an objective function which is some of the thicknesses and as a, uh, a laminate I'm going to start with the maximum number of uh, again the 16 plies and I'm going to try to minimize the thickness of this laminate while satisfying a certain buckling load carrying capability. Now, if I cannot satisfy this, I'll actually have to increase the, the laminate thickness by adding uh, uh, Z1, F, uh, I mean, Z5, F5, N5, and perhaps Z6, F6, and N6. Uh, as I increase the number of variables, I'm starting from a thicker and thicker laminate. Okay? And depending on the, how much load I need to be able to carry, if my load is too high, and if I don't start from the large enough thickness, I will not find the minimum thickness laminate that will be able to carry that uh, those uh, loads. So, but I'm assuming that uh, uh, 16 plies is going to be enough, so that I'm going to use the same variables, and my objective function this time is not. Uh, uh, frequency maximization or uh, button load maximization, but it's thickness minimization, which is to minimize the sum of these uh, with the caveat that uh, some small number epsilon times lambda star, uh, where lambda star is also part of the design variables. Now, I don't know what lambda star is. It's going to come out as a, a continuous variable, not integer variable, uh, that will satisfy certain requirements. So this is uh, the definition of the objective function. Um, I can immediately define epsilon to be zero point zero zero one. Some small number uh, will be sufficient. Uh, there is a reason for this: that uh, if I don't put this in here, sometimes in the uh, it will pick a lambda value that will be actually uh, uh, not the lowest, uh, but uh, one higher in favor of the, the thickness, just to make the object function uh, too small. So, I mean, they're uh, violating the, uh, the, the condition that it will go to a, a laminate, thinner laminate, that will actually uh, uh, buckle in terms of uh, lambda star. So this is epsilon star, uh, epsilon. I'm going to write a, a module for lambda critical. So if I specify M and N, uh, it will compute lambda star. Okay. And that module uh, is here. So I can actually replace their places. I'll put it there. Uh, so lambda critical is determined by M and N. And I wrote a module pi squared D11 M over A to the fourth. This is exact same equation that that was in the PowerPoint uh, chart, just to show you what uh, we are doing here. We are repeating uh, this expression here as lambda critical as a function of F and N. Uh, N0 and Y will be given, uh, A and B will be given, and we won't know what M and N are. 
but you're going to uh, determine MNN by trying all combinations of MNN that we're going to be uh, considering for this particular uh, problem. So this is, let's execute this module. So if, if you want to see what this equation looks like for one and one, it's this one here. You can see load nx divided by a squared. Uh, m is uh, uh, taken uh, one, n is taken one. So if this was uh, two comma two, you'll get a slightly different uh, expression with uh, four in here and four in here. That's two square, m square and n square. And the only other thing that I need, pi is known. These are in terms of uh, the identity variables, so I need to bring them in. And A and B, the aspect ratio has to be defined. So let's uh, define the these from uh, from this. I'm going to copy all these expressions here. Mm -hmm. So let me delete this output. Delete these outputs. And I need to also bring the definition of the D's. Copy those. simplified versions go in here. Find as pi thicknesses. Uh, I'm going to also define the pi thickness at some point, but uh, let's define the d's. So let's see what happens to now lambda uh, equal to two after these definitions. Uh, I think we're going to have still a few things left: uh, load and a and b and pi thickness. So the rest is n's and f's. Uh, so M and N uh, will be left in there as parametric variables, and we need to define the, the, the loads. I'm going to define the load NX and NY to be Let's say thousand. What do you think? Thousand is a good value. I do not know. Actually, I am kind of clueless uh, for this problem. But I will make this one thousand times. 25% of the axis load to be transverse load. So these are defined. And then I have to define the ply thickness. Uh, 
I think we had the title is W5. Now, if I go and do this, ah, plate aspect ratio. Uh, let's make it R A equals twenty and B equals fifteen. So it's completely uh, numeric except uh, the use, which we need to define to be able to solve this problem uh, as a number, and the ends and f's and uh, everything else. So let's define the the use from the previous problem. Here it is. Now look at the um, the curricles. It is completely in terms of the the variables n's and f's and uh, z's. All right, we'll need the constraints for uh, each one of these for a, a set of uh, values. M from let's say one to five, and equals one to five. The higher uh, the half wavelength, the, uh, uh, the higher the the button load. So the critical one is the lowest one of these. That's why we specify that the start to be lowest of the uh, values for M and N. So we're gonna do lambda star one one through lambda star uh, say 25 changing uh, this from uh, m from 1 to 5 n from 1 to 5 or or 4 i think even 3 should be uh, sufficient so i'm going to do 3 so i can uh, do it as either uh, um this was in this is but i just to make the, the case Number one, star one, one equals one, one. So these are uh, gonna go into the constraints. Lambda star one, one is something that has to be uh, satisfied for this. Um, and constraint actually is on the value of uh, lambda star. So actually, I can uh, I can do this. I don't need the. I can do this equality and then uh, enforce the condition that uh, lambda star must be less than lambda one one. Let's do it that way. Let's make this equal. I'm going to do two or two one first. Two comma 
follow me and I don't let me make a, a mistake in these because I'm doing live as we go along. The third uh, set is this. If you're wondering why I'm doing this, say so, so that we clarify. One, four, two, four, three, four, four, four. four. This covers every possible uh, mode shape between one and four. So the constraints uh, now, I haven't written this constraint. All right, constraint one, uh, these uh, must be equally cool. Uh, less than equal to one because I can have a uh, zero thickness layer but I enforce that Z2, F2 and 2 must be less than Z1 plus F1 plus N1 so that outside plies are uh, can only be zero inside plies uh, should have uh, non-zero values and then uh, I'm going to ensure that lambda star in that define lambda star in my objective function. Where is my objective function? Lambda star, there it is. Lamp star. Okay. This ensures that I have the right buckling mode shape. A lot of those. Two, one, three, one, four, one. One, three, two, three, 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 four, three, one, four, two, four, three, four, four, four. Uh, 
All right. These are all uh, in terms of the Lambda star and and the Fs and uh, whatnot. Fantastic. Now the bottom last one. We are almost running out of time. I'm gonna run this whether it uh, runs it or not. We're gonna leave it at that. Uh, but uh, basically, all I have to do now is to put uh, those qualities into their places. Uh, we are trying to find, maximize the, minimize the thickness. So it's not minus objective function, objective function. My constraints are actually the summation of all the constraints. So I'm going to put a T in there. equals join I'll let you know if this one, uh, works or not but we run, uh, run running out of time um, Wasn't it, uh, what was it, the labels? Constraints three. Mm. And this is S. All of them are <laughs> incorrect. <laughs> No, the first one is also constraints one and two. Didn't I not execute those? Tell me that I actually executed those. Ah, didn't. Constraints one. All right. Now everything is executed and hopefully typed correctly. All uh, right, very good, very good, very good. Variables are the same except one lambda star is in there. Uh, these are integers and binaries, that is correct. These and ends. Uh, am I forgetting anything? I'm probably forgetting anything, something. Objective and constraints, T. Constraints, T is here, isn't it? Constraint T. And OBJ? Didn't I execute OBJ? Okay, it's failed. Uh, I have uh, completely zero thickness. So it didn't run. I, I, I did something uh, somewhere uh, not correct. And I even have a, an objective function, even though all the variables are, are there. Yeah. So I have a negative uh, thickness. 
the entire limit being uh, zero. It is possible that uh, my loads are too big, but I'll have to check this. Okay, gentlemen, uh, this is it for today. Uh, I'll fix this up and uh, send it your way so that you will see. I will write a little note to where uh, the, the problem was, but obviously uh, I missed something along the way that I sold the zero thickness laminate that is very happy. Uh, it uh, maximized, uh, uh, minimized the, the objective function with zero thickness by putting lambda star to be actually a negative number in there um, after multiplying it for 001. So something is not right. That's it. Uh, not a success, but I'll fix it up and uh, send it your way. Hopefully, uh, before uh, uh, Monday. I think I have something else to work on tomorrow, or maybe I can fix it tonight. So we'll see. Somewhere I have to fix this because this is not an acceptable answer. It says uh, all the plies are actually. Uh, going to zero. All right, I am going to stop right there.